and an article by NBC News. The title of the article is Australia Wildfires Unleash Millions of Tons of Carbon Dioxide. This is by Denise Chow. Interestingly, they mention over here the historic wildfires in Australia likely unleashed about 900 million tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, equivalent to nearly double the country's total yearly fossil fuel emissions, according to scientists. I've been receiving some comments and emails from people concerning about in Australia, concerning about these wildfires that happen. And they were wondering about how it, it could relate to the end times. So, as I mentioned to you before, a lot of it is concerning about precursors in our time. Precursors. Now, a lot of the, as you might know from this liberal newspaper and a lot of other liberal news, is that they make a big deal concerning about uh, the environmentalism, right? About global warming. So then, their concern concerning this is how much of the earth and the world will change because of the Australia wildfires. Because they claimed right over here that 900 million tons where carbon dioxide was spreading throughout the atmosphere. So it was spreading all over everywhere. All right. Because of the fires that are going on. Now, the thing concerning about this carbon dioxide that is spreading, how much of the world will change, I find pretty interesting that in Revelation chapter 8, it will show you that there will be a huge transformation to our world, and God, he will send down fire throughout the rest of the world. So if you think that this was bad enough, where it's going through almost 1 billion tons, where carbon dioxide is spreading, around the whole earth, you got to realize this is that that's nothing compared to what God's going to do at the book of Revelation. Amen. Now, Revelation chapter 8 and verse 7, the Bible says the first angel sounded and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood and they were cast upon the earth and the third part of trees was burnt up and all green grass was burnt up. This happened in Australia, but God, he's going to send a much larger one at Revelation chapter 8, sometime at the tribulation. Sometime at the tribulation, God's going to send down fire from heaven. Hail mingled with fire, actually. So with this hail that is mingled with fire, it's going to come down. And when it comes down, the Bible says that it's going to be so big that a third of the environment throughout the whole world is going to be burned up. So there goes Mother Nature. So, oh my goodness, you know, uh, how much of our environment is going to be affected? Hey, guess what? It's going to be worse at the tribulation. And a lot of the liberals, the tree huggers, and the people who spend millions to millions of dollars concerning about we got to fight global warming, you're not going to fight global warming. Yeah. Trust yeah. me, you're, that's not going to happen. <laughs> you know why? Because God's going to send a huge global warming, and there goes your millions of dollars right over there. Yeah. Oh so why, oh, you know, are, we all got to save the planet. You know, don't you care about your next generation? Now, Bible-believing Christians, we don't deliberately trash and ruin the environment. We don't believe in that. But we're not worried about this thing called global warming that's going to happen. Well, why not? The reason why is there's going to be plenty of land left still that God's going to make sure that he burns up everything. Amen. So you're not going to fight global warming. The key about this is we want our next generation to survive on this earth. Survive for the tribulation, you mean? Uh -huh. See, it's not going to do much good. It's not going to do much good. Here are several quotes from the uh, news source, which I found to be pretty interesting. So they mentioned over here that the full impact of the unprecedented fires in southeastern Australia is not yet known. But Rob Jackson, a professor of Earth System Science at Stanford University, said emissions from the blazes could hit 1 billion tons by the end of the season. For comparison, Australia's greenhouse gas emissions from electricity, 
transportation, agriculture, and the industrial sector collectively totaled about, before this one billion ton hit, before they had at March 2018 to March 2019, 540 million tons. So now because of this thing from the Australia wildfires, it pretty much doubled it. So it pretty much doubled it. So everyone's getting concerned about this carbon dioxide emission that's really spreading about. But it is very interesting what they mentioned right over here that despite of this thing spreading everywhere, where it's hitting about almost one billion, why is it that we're still alive? Why is it that we can still enjoy God's beautiful earth? Because someone is keeping it together. Amen. See, uh, the problem, you notice the problem with these evolutionists, these scientists, when they do carbon-14 dating, when they uh, do their statistics and measurements in science, and then they try to talk to you about, man, our Earth is going to blow up, so that's why we got to protect the environment. The problem with mankind is that they think that the environment is going to have a stable condition as it is according to their measurement. Yeah. But environment always changes. Yeah. You know why? Because God's the one in charge yeah. to increase the heat or to bring a little bit more cold or some kind of other catastrophe or some kind of great day that happens from the Lord. God's the one that keeps it together. That's the reason why what they don't understand is this. Quote, for reasons we don't entirely understand, the carbon system has been pretty robust so far. But that doesn't mean it will go on like that forever, Hewton said. There are lots of arguments for why these carbon sinks will become saturated, but it all remains a bit of a puzzle. <laughs> these scientists, see, they blow up their minds. They do the data, the measurement, and it's scientifically accurate. But guess what? Conditions change. And you have to start all over again, right? It's a puzzle. We don't get it. Why? No, we know why. God's the one. Did you read the book of Job? He sends the frost. He sends the wind. He sends the rain. And he can send down fire from heaven if he wants to. Why? Because that's God's green earth. He can do whatever he wants. Amen. See, we're not worried about that. Yet even if oceans are effective reservoirs, because see how God created the earth, is so that we can still enjoy his earth and not worry about global warming. God knows how much his crea creation can handle. But you notice that the secular scientist is, man, it's a miracle that the earth is doing this. But there's a limitation somewhere, so we got to be careful. No, God knows what he's doing. Yet even if oceans are effective reservoirs inundating these bodies of water with carbon dioxide, has other negative effects, according to Hewton. When carbon dioxide mixes with ocean water, it changes the ocean's chemistry and makes the water more acidic, which can be harmful for corals, shellfish, and other sea creatures, he said. A recent study found that the waters off California are acidifying twice as fast as elsewhere on the planet, threatening critical fisheries along the coast. And coral reefs are under assault around the world from bleaching events driven by greenhouse gas emissions and warming ocean temperatures. Notice that this fire that's spreading contributes where the oceans can be affected and even got sea creatures. Does that happen at the tribulation? Read verse 8, uh, verse 7. We read that, right? Fire sent down from heaven, right? Yeah. Then verse 8, the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. Okay, see that? Yeah. And the third part of the sea became blood. Yeah. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life, what? Yeah. Died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. All again, what? Precursors. Yeah. God's just showing you precursors. And then he's saying at the tribulation, it's going to be worse. We're worried about our ocean. The ocean can only take so much. So be careful with our environment. Even if you have a perfect ocean, God's just going to ruin it again. <laughs> God's just going to send that down, and then all these sea creatures that you're trying to uh, protect, they're all going to die. 
Man, how about that? So then what's going to happen to all the fish and everybody and all the little creatures? They all die. Yeah, that's a good fish, right? Amen. That's a good fish right over there. But anyway, anyway. So we see that the creatures of the earth in the ocean, yeah, they die out. Something happened where God sent down the fire, and then also the oceans become affected. All right. Let's read some more interesting things from this article over here. It's so interesting that, you know, if you have your Bible in your hand, that's like, man, if only these news reporters would read the Bible. Yeah then they would know something here. It's just sort of luck that land and oceans are taking up half of what we emit. Oh, <laughs> luck, yeah. Oh, we're lucky we're still alive and that we're not dead and that global warming has not spread about. God knows the limitations of his earth. Said Richard Hewton, a senior scientist at the Woods Hole Research Center in Falmouth, Massachusetts. Warming is occurring at half the rate that it would be if we didn't have these land and ocean sinks. See, God created the earth for that reason. He can take care of that carbon emission and all that stuff. Studies have found that even as global emissions have increased, roughly 50% of carbon dioxide is still sequestered by plants and the ocean. In other words, the more humans emit, the more carbon these reservoirs also seem to take up. Scientists have struggled to explain why this generous absorption takes place. And it's also not known whether this will happen indefinitely or if the planet will reach a tipping point. It's funny, right? When we laugh, when we read about this, people are, you know, the liberal environments, they're right now screaming, this is nothing to laugh about. Don't you care about your children, your children's children? I mean, we're going to reach a tipping point with the planet. Look, man, God's already taking care of it. Yeah. And when you, and you're not going to reach a point where you're going to save the whole planet. That's not what's going to happen. Yeah. God's going to burn the planet. In fact, he's not just going to burn up a third of Earth's creation. He's going to blow up the whole Earth. Yeah. You're not going to do any good by that time. <laughs> Notice, interestingly, that they mention also over here, Though recent heavy rain has helped control some of the blazes, Australia is only halfway through its summer season and temperatures typically peak in January and February, which means the fire risk will likely remain high for months to come. So notice right here that what rescued them was that rain that came down. So rain is necessary where it can prevent this so-called global warming that's spreading about. Why? Because God sent it, so we don't have to worry about that. But at the tribulation, he don't send it. Oh, Revelation 11. Good. Revelation yeah. chapter 11. God knows that. See, he knows that. So he's going to let the fire spread, and he's not going to let, let the scientists, oh, land, ocean, reservoir, rain, rain, we beg you to come down. No, God's not going to do that. Yeah. He's going to shut it all off. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 11. These guys are not environmentalists. They hate Mother Earth. Look at these guys, man. They hate Mother Earth. Revelation 11, verse 6. What do the two witnesses do at the tribulation? These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. Horrible, evil people. That's why these environmentalists, see, they're going to get mad at these two witnesses because the earth is dying and they're like saying, these two witnesses are trying to kill all of us. We need the rain, and they shut off the rain. That's why they hate these guys. And they're going to rejoice when these two witnesses are killed by the Antichrist. Oh, why? Because they are truly terrorists who killed the whole earth. Wow. That's, that's what they're going to see them as. Notice, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, right? See, the ocean doesn't rescue them either. And to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. That's an often thing. Let's do, spend millions of dollars saving the planet and then Moses and Elijah just often as they will. Ha ha ha, ha ha ha, ha ha It's not a ha ha moment. Yeah. <laughs> we sweated, we bled, we fought in office, we struggled so hard voting our democratic presidents to do this. 
the two witnesses just go, ha, 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 blow up the planet here. Kaboom, kaboom, kaboom right there. This is not funny. Well, God never said that it was a funny moment. It's the wrath of God. It's the wrath of God. That's the reason why you better get saved in Jesus Christ right now. You know what we're laughing at? We're not laughing at people dying and their calamity. What we're laughing about is mankind at his prideful boasting state in his wickedness try to overthrow God and God just takes a flick of his finger and then just turns it to mush. Amen. That's the reason why. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here are some, here's another interesting quote from them. And I find this pretty interesting. Which is why... Who's going to rescue us from, quote-unquote, global warming and the end of the earth? It is never mankind. It is never you. No matter how much you do to save Mother Earth on the planet, you're not. That's why post-tribulation and uh, post-millennial, amillennial doctrine is very, very appealing. Where we have to resist the Antichrist kingdom. We, f we fight it together and build our kingdom on the earth together. See, that's very appealing to the liberal viewpoint, where, see, we got to fight against this evil and build it ourselves. And then God will look down at us and say, man, that's a great job you do, and then he's going to come down. That's post-millennial teaching. But no, we need the king of kings. Quote, forest regrowth can also offset emissions, but given the severity of the Australian wildfires, it could take decades for vegetation to repopulate the scorched areas. According to Guido van der Werf, a scientist at the Vrije Universiteit Amsterdam who helped develop the Global Fire Emissions Database, which tracks greenhouse gas emissions and air pollution from wildfires around the world. So, you know, forest regrowth is going to take a long time and, I mean, we need the vegetation. That's what they're panicking about because the fire is going to wipe it all out. You know, just as how God just easily goes to the green of the earth, God can just go poof and let the green grow. Isaiah 51. You need him. Amen. You need him to save all of creation. Not you. Not your millions of dollars wasted. It is God. You're ne no matter how much money you spend, sorry, you're wasting your money. You're wasting your money. Because God's just going to ruin it anyways at the end. He's going to ruin it, and guess what? He's going to restore it. Guess what happens to the green? Look at Isaiah chapter 51. Look at verse 3. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her what? Waste places. That old wasteland in Australia and in other places, especially Israel, God can restore the green. And he will make her wilderness like Eden. See that? And her desert like the what? Garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. That's what you need. You need the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So this Australian wildfire stuff, I'm not worried about it. But it's so strange how these scientists and all these people just panic. Tear their hair. Think, think that this is the end of the earth. we got to figure out what to do. You're wasting millions of dollars in data and all that kind of stuff when you're still baffled on how we're still surviving? Mm -hmm. You know why? Because God. Amen. We rely on God to take care of us, to keep the earth surviving despite of all the natural catastrophes. We rely on God, where he's going to burn up all of the, the green of the earth. And we rely on God when he restores the green of the earth. What's the point of the whole thing? The point of the whole thing is, is that you just... Go about your father's business, yeah. win some souls, get them saved so that they don't go through this awful tribulation, and just rely on God for any natural catastrophe that happens in life. What a way to end, right? Isn't that peace? Yeah. This is why, and we're called terrorists for teaching this kind of stuff. Strange people. Isn't it terrorists from the news saying, we're all going to die, we're all going to die, we're all going to die. I mean, if you go out in the streets and say, you're going to die, you're going to die, they'd arrest you, man. Lock up NBC, CNN, every single day, man. Lock up these people, man. I thought they're, they sound like the terrorists to me. You know what we're trying to do? Get eternal life. 
Get eternal life. Amen. Get rescued from death. Get rescued Amen. from death. Amen. Terrorism? <laughs> that ain't terrorism. The world has gone insane. 